All right, well, happy Friday, everybody. Nick Slavic here, proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company, also the host of Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience as a craftsman and an entrepreneur to answer any of your questions. Now, if you're a homeowner, this is a place where you can ask anything you've ever wanted to about painting, paint, the business side of it, whatever. And for the other fellow pros on here, the other fellow craftsmen, uh, we're gonna discuss entrepreneurship, apprenticeship, selling, estimating, marketing, any that good stuff so uh, today is gonna be a fun show um, this is an open show you can suggest a topic you can ask a question uh, whatever you would like I'm actually here with we'll turn this guy around oh don't run away so film crew from this old house is here and we are doing a deck project so we're awaiting lunch you can see the rest of the guys hanging out down by the pool down there uh, lunch run is being uh, done right now uh, we're gonna finish this deck and then move on to our second deck of the day so they were here last week uh, we got the decks washed restored and then we're gonna be finish them today and it's it's been a fun process these guys are fun to work with so um, okay any questions you guys want to uh, uh, ask here that's fine we also have uh, <laughs> we got boom mic coming in here <laughs> Oops, sorry. These guys are an absolute blast. <laughs> this is Tony Mata, director of photography. Is that is that the That's official? Correct. Oh, nice. So, uh, how long you been uh, doing this with this old house? Oh, this is our third project. Right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, what other what Our other third day, yeah. We we shot with uh, another one for color. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. the plumbing company. Yeah. Yes. Cool. And you're you're out of Wisconsin, right? Yes. Okay. Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah. Nice. And so is and Kohler. There's my guys there lollygagging Working down by the hard. pool yeah yeah <laughs> so what uh, anything surprise you about this process uh your professionalism oh, i was wow, amazed <laughs> i'm just That's i'm just awesome. telling you, you know, we thought yeah we're just gonna you know the, stay in the deck and you guys have a whole method and <laughs> it, I, I was pretty impressed no that's awesome yeah, thanks for yeah, saying that yeah, we're and, and, work ethic it's amazing well likewise too i mean it's it's good you know we always complain like uh you never run into a lot of people who are really competent at your job and you guys are like fun to work with you also seem to be super effective at it like you, you set something up you do it it works and we kind of move on which is cool you know there's yeah. it doesn't seem like there's a lot of experimentation it <laughs> helps that we've worked many years together yeah. so we reach read each other's minds oh that's and awesome. and we also multitask i mean all of us shoot all of us can do audio all of us can fly a drone yeah i've noticed there's not like a hierarchy really where no. well I mean, I'm obviously boss. obviously I'm, you're I'm the boss say. but it's not like it's not like you're sitting <laughs> their bark and orders no, like, these guys no. are proactive they're amazing everybody pitches in it's like somebody's doing this somebody's yeah it's it's a cool experience this is not something i've done before so yeah, yeah. well <laughs> i'm glad that uh, working working with you guys it's been awesome. great i hope we can great do this experience. Again. this is fun this is really fun and uh lunch is here is talking nice talking to you <laughs> awesome yeah see you tony um yeah so we oh boom mic coming in <laughs> I think you call that a bad shot, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna get to, I see you guys are doing a couple questions here. Uh, we're gonna get to those in just a second. I'm gonna go through the PDCA contractor question of the week. The PDCA is the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. It's the largest, most professional group of painting contractors probably in the world, and it is the Paint Contractors Organization. So uh, they sent in a question. Uh, they're in the middle of estimating month here, and uh, they were wondering about um, being pushy during sales. Uh, what's the right amount of push? Uh, what's the do you do you not be pushy at all? Do you close? Do you not close? How do you do that? So. Basically, I'll give you my experience. Uh, I'll also give you some uh, perspective from what I've seen around too. Um, it's been 10 years I've been doing all the estimates uh, for my company. Recently, I've been training some other people in my company to help take some of that over. Um, I've actually made it a point to never ask for a sale. Uh, I've been experimenting uh, with some people, uh, you know, who send me electronic requests for estimates. Once in a while, if it's a job I really want, I'll, I'll test the waters and see if this is something where I can, you know, can I say, can I do it for you? But, but really, for the most part, 99.9% .9 of my estimates over the last 10 years, I've never actually said at the end of the estimate, you know, is this something I can do? Can I put you on the books? What do you think? You know, and, and try to walk away with a deposit check for that stuff. Um, I, I, I understand that's probably against the norm a little bit. Uh, at the last PDCA Expo, the big expo, uh, we were sitting around a table talking about sales, and I mentioned that I've never asked for a sale, and one guy just about leapt over the table at me. He couldn't believe it, uh, that, that I would just let all that stuff go without asking for a sale. So it is probably a little bit against the norm, but me personally, there's nothing that turns me off more than somebody who is um, going through the process of communicating with another human just to sell them something. What I try to do 
is um, when somebody calls me already and invites me into their house, they've already passed some hurdles. They're interested, you know, and it's basically your job to lose. They have a problem and you need to solve it. So you have to listen to them and, and figure out what it is. Do they, uh, is something failing? Uh, it does Is there a maintenance issue or is it just a recolor? And you have to approach those things very differently. So um, what I do is listen. Uh, and then as soon as they're done, they're going to have a series of questions. Uh, a lot of people just want to be heard. Uh, let them talk as long as they can. Everybody wants to talk color, so don't, uh, I try not to put up walls about, you know, oh no, that's a color consultation, we can't talk about that. People want to, um, people want to trust you. And if they've already invited into your house, there's always a baseline of that trust. And I just try to build upon that over the course of the estimate. So. Um, I uh, another bit of perspective is and and I would urge you if you don't know what to do I would I would sincerely urge you to um, uh, experiment uh, with your approach to it um, I would uh, I would sort of uh, not passive-aggressively but uh, you know uh, maybe not physically ask them for it and then maybe sometimes at the end of the estimate you know if you feel that you've gained some trust maybe just throw in a hey you know is this something I can do for you or, or when do you want me to do this or some way um, but uh, for me personally uh, the, the greasy sort of pushy salesman um, is just a huge turnoff now a good bit of uh, perspective is that I also know some super effective salespeople that uh, when they're doing the estimate uh, normally you know you give them the estimate they said oh, okay you know I'll have to talk with my spouse about this and I know that um, you know this uh, particular person I'm thinking about they'll stand there and say why don't we get them on the phone now let's get an answer uh, if they give you a yes we can do this we'll put you on the books I'll take a deposit check and do that that person is also very effective and if you do it right with a little bit of tact you don't come off as a greasy salesman so I am not saying my way is the best way uh, for my personality uh, everybody uh, has two personalities um, you know there is your um, you know natural personality uh, how you conduct yourself and then there's an adapted personality uh, my natural and adapted are, are fairly close together but uh, I am way less of an outgoing people person than most people think mainly because of this but I am not actually if you look at my personality profile I am not the best person to be out there and doing sales I am not the best person to be out there doing it. My personality profile would dictate that I'm probably going to be effective at it, and I've adapted that style, but there's people who have way less experience in this industry than me that, that can sell my pants off, uh, do circles around me with sales, because their personality is so naturally uh, natural to that, they can do it. So um, experiment, you kind of have to sell uh, your style. So for me personally, uh, it makes my skin shiver to think about you know a, a mattress salesman or a used car salesman, those greasy types where you can tell they're looking right over your shoulder when they talk to you. They just want to get you to say yes, and it's uh, no tricks, no techniques, not really into that. So um, that's sort of my approach. Um, so thank you to the PDCA, the Painting and Decorating Contractors uh, of America, uh, for submitting some questions like that. They're big advocates of mine. I'm big advocates of theirs because of what they did for my business and all that other stuff. So let's go through a couple questions here, see what you guys have. Uh, da, 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 da. Dave Hernandez, good to see you. Derek Anselm, as usual. Curtis Petzlaff, best siding stain. Um, Curtis, tell me uh, if you're looking for uh, transparent, translucent, semi-solid, solid. What are you looking for? Most most siding stain, uh, when people talk about that, ends up being a solid color stain. And uh, if you if you want to know water-based versus oil, I'd be happy to give input there. But uh, there's a it's a big wide open field. So Paul Rafferty. Derek Anslem. All right, let's see what we got here. Updates on uh, Sherwin Williams Extreme Block versus Cover Stain, Baited Breath. That's one of the few products I haven't uh, transitioned to a SW yet. Yes, uh, I've been doing experiments in the shop, and I've been trying to replicate experiments so that it wasn't sort of one-off stuff because uh, I've been I've been testing it. Most of the time, when I use Cover Stain or Extreme Block, it's gonna be on pre-finished kitchen cabinet so something that's already been done with lacquer or varnish and those can be very um, specific uh, finishes so if I just do one cabinet door and do my scratch test my crosshatch test uh, my stain blocking test uh, that's just one data point so I'm doing it on a couple of them and I'm making sure that it's gonna work out well so uh, so far um, the extreme block I've been very very pleased with I absolutely love the product uh, I just want to, uh, to to do some comparisons and then send it out there but yeah Derek you'll be the first to know Chris Shank the great and powerful Chris Shank, Jade Earhart, uh, James Gilbert, Marito, thank you for watching, Lucas uh, Bautarde, my friend, down in Brazil, 
Christian Widmer, thank you for watching. Uh, Tanya Pamier, thank you for watching. Mike Danahy, how's it going, buddy? Uh, and if you guys have any interesting stuff going on in your job sites too, feel free. You can come live with me if you like. Uh, you can request it. Um, James Gilbert, I leave the house and email them a painting proposal in a PDF document. You know, this this brings up another sort of hot topic in estimating where um, a lot of times when I go to a house to estimate something, um, they'll say, well, you know, thanks for your estimate. What I do is uh, 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 yesterday I actually transitioned to electronic estimates on my tablet as I walk through the house. I still do duplicate, paper duplicates though. I'm tried and true. I can, I can do an entire house estimate in about 14 minutes walls, trim, ceiling, uh, option out everything, closets, cabinets, everything. So it's it's tough to move away from that, but I know I have to for, for reasons, uh, you know, that'll benefit my company. But uh, when I give my estimate, I always give my estimates immediately to the clients. I walk them through everything, answer any questions. A lot of times they'll say, well, thank you, but I'm still waiting on some estimates from some other people. They were here this, this week previous. Um, James, that's a good way. I mean, if you if you go back and check all your numbers, make sure it's good. Send them over a knife PDF. Uh, that's good. Uh, I am a firm, firm, firm believer of giving people an instant estimate. So, like when I did my uh, tablet estimate the other day, I have a mobile printer in my mobile command unit, my 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 command van, and a little desk there. And uh, you know, I just take my Microsoft Surface, uh, do what I need to. I'm writing with the pen that comes with it, taking all the notes about the house. Sit there, transpose it into my um, uh, spreadsheet my spreadsheet email it takes about you know four and a half minutes uh, I attach all my information sheets to the back side of it um, got a great tip from uh, Paris painting too what they do is they take all their information their contract and stuff too they pre-print it on paper and you stock your mobile command unit with that so then when you print something out it's already printed on the back side you don't have to reprint that and uh, yeah I got that out uh, and left it for the homeowner instantly and you know the whole estimate uh, it was a quick walkthrough on a rental property uh, an entire house house. It uh, took about six minutes walk through, take notes. took about 14 minutes in my uh, van in total, getting it all ready. Printed it out, gave it to the clients. I also emailed them a copy instantly, answered any questions, went through what they needed to. And uh, so that seemed to be like a good process. And the reason I'm moving to electronic uh, estimating is number one, it's super sexy and it's awesome when you can walk around with a tablet and just do some stuff like that. But also my paper estimates and my chicken scratching are not transferable to other people when they estimate. Like right now I'm having uh, a couple of my leadership team transcribe those into the sheets that we give to our crews so that we have like job site instructions. Um, it's going to be way easier if I give them an electronic form. So uh, James, uh, if, if you're, uh, a lot of people do this too. They, they email it the same day or the next day. I am a firm, firm believer in an instant estimate. Um, you know, I've been doing this long enough. I have my numbers down and uh, it's easy to walk through a house and, uh, and just sort of give it to them instantly. Also, the benefit of giving it to them instantly is you can answer any questions. And if you do want to make an on, uh, on the site sale, uh, you know, they, uh, you, you have that option immediately. They have all the information. You answer any questions they have and it's a good thing. So Ramon Banda, uh, Connor O'Keefe, uh, thanks for watching. Fellow Minnesota painter, Brian Kuhn, Hector. I with your uh, I agree with your method. Build on trust, not a salesman, but feel the clients uh, if they are ready to give you a deposit and close the deal will give you many indications. With that experience, you will easily understand. Oh, absolutely, Hector. I I couldn't agree more. You can uh, if you've had enough repetitions. You know, I probably do two to three hundred estimates a year, and I've been doing it for ten years now, so I have a lot of data points on it. And you can tell from the first second somebody contacts you even just the method they contact you. If somebody sends in a random um, uh, estimate request through my website, it, they're interested, but maybe not as interested as somebody who picks up their phone, physically calls you and leaves a message. Uh, that's somebody who, who really wants to get a hold of you, talk to you about it, and go forward. So Hector, I absolutely agree. And uh, sadly, you know, you like to systematize your, your uh, business and everything so that it's the McDonald's thing, uh, McDonald's system where anybody can do it, but honestly, you can't replicate some of that experience. And that, that experience is almost an unfair competitive advantage a lot of the times when I go into houses. Chris Shuck, thank you for watching. Christian, there we go. Here we go. Uh, we got a good question. How do you manage decks? Washing, sanding, staining, moisture content, weather, other jobs when it's uh, uh, right time, weather to stain. Now, this deck project for this old house had to be done in May. I almost never do decks in May. I'll squeeze in a couple decks for my uh, good clients that have graduation parties to do, but May in Minnesota is a complete disaster. Two out of four weeks 
of May is usually rain or heavy dew or inclement weather. So what I normally do is June, July, and August in Minnesota are the stable months. And it's, well, it's actually like today. It's, it's 81 degrees, a little breeze, barely a uh, cloud in the sky here, just beautiful day. And that's when I like to do my decks. So what I like to do, Christian, is group my decks. So we'll send out a wash team one day and they'll, they'll do, you know, somewhere between like three and five decks. Uh, we'll give it the days to, uh, um, um, uh, dry and then we check it for moisture 15 percent or lower I usually like to get it uh, towards 10 if we can but uh, the natural stasis of wood you'll never get it to zero and you probably never see five uh, you might do, you know do that in Arizona if you like but in Minnesota if you can get like 10 11 12 that's that's about as dry as you're ever going to get here because every day uh, these things get saturated with dew and whatnot so uh, what I basically do, uh, I know Christian, you're a super good uh, washer. Uh, you actually have a separate company with that. You know your chemicals. You actually help me perfect my process of chemically restoring and stripping decks. Uh, so you are definitely the expert on this. I do a simplified version of what you do. Uh, I've had great success with decks where we do, you know, the reasonable restorations where uh, I give my clients the option to completely strip down the decks to bare wood. Most people don't want to do it just for cost reasons. So I have to do a reasonable re expect, uh, reasonable restoration on these decks where I will uh, use some chemicals to brighten the deck, get rid of some old dead wood fiber, loosen up some of the old uh, coating, but we'll leave a lot of the uh, intact coating in place on the spindles and then we'll pick stains and finishes that'll blend everything together here. So I'll turn this guy around and show you. This deck here, uh, with the sun in the back, you can't really see it too well, but almost every spindle was a um, perfectly intact stain, uh, stain spindle. We washed it, we sanded it, uh, we got it all ready, and then I picked a finish that would sort of blend the bare wood, you know, because the floor and the tops of the handrails get bare, that will blend those with the new areas. And we got a great, great match with that stuff. Uh, and it blends nearly perfectly, so uh, it's a it's a good match. But again, that takes a little experience too to pick when you're dealing with translucent or semi-transparent stains. So, oh, you can tell lunch is here. Everybody's moving towards the lunch. Awesome. So um, basically, I, I try to make my process as simple as possible. So we'll wash it, uh, we'll chemically brighten it. If we need to do a little bit of stripping, we'll do that. Give it a day or two to dry check the moisture. If it's good, we will sand it with random orbital sanders, uh, either 80 grit or 120. Uh, we use a lot of 3M Cubitron. That stuff is just, it goes forever. Uh, and then I'm a big fan of uh, oil stains and hybrid stains. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we like to work in, uh, in two-person teams. So we'll get, uh, we'll do all the rails and spindles first and handrails. We'll go around the entire deck being careful to protect the floor so we don't get drips on it because with a translucent stain, it'll show through. And then we do the floor extremely critical to, to keep a wet edge so we don't get lap marks. So we usually work in two or three person teams and just process right across the floor. Uh, we each take a four foot section of the board and we just move it straight down the deck and it's uh, it's perfect. It's We like to do them early mornings when they're no dew. It's nice and cool. So a lot of the decks here in Minnesota are like this one. They're south, they're west facing, there's no tree cover. And if you go out there on an 87 degree day to stain that deck, it's horrible for you, it's horrible for the finish. You get lap marks everywhere if you're not doing it right. Uh, we like to brush them too. Uh, I really like to work in the stain into the, uh, into the cracks and crevices. We've been experimenting with other methods, but honestly, it takes so little time to do a deck. You know, with uh, uh, sanding will take us, you know, 20 minutes to a half an hour. We'll blow it off with a leaf blower. And then the deck like we were looking at there, you know, probably two guys, two to three hours. I mean, it, by the time you would set up to protect the house and the landscaping from spraying, and then you back brush and back, it just, we can knock them out so quick with brushing. And the finish is so beautiful. You fill all those pores and it just creates a beautiful, beautiful sheen on the deck. Um, yeah, but weather is tough. That's why I, I usually wait for my decks till, uh, till winter, or excuse me, summer. Uh, Rodrigo, thanks for watching. Gabriel. Daniel Himowitz, uh, thank you, sir, for watching. Trevor Johnson, Chad, good afternoon, <laughs> bearded buddy. Uh, I have also never asked a uh, uh, for a sale when on an estimate. I have a decent conversation, try to sell my personality. I get all I need and then send out my estimate. It works for me. Oh, thanks a lot, man. And I, I actually had dinner with Chad uh, probably about a month ago, and he's a stand-up dude. He's another painter here in Minnesota, and uh, boy, he's doing some awesome things too. So. Oh, the PDCA, yeah, definitely. Let's, uh, who else has got some questions here? Uh, Mark Johnson, okay, here we go. Uh, my uh, historic restoration friend there. Um, do you offer a warranty on a paint job? Another thing that I get a lot of flack for, I offer no warranty on a paint job. 
uh, once every three years, something goes on in a job that shouldn't have. Uh, it usually has to do with fading, premature fading, or if something just, just peels prematurely, most of the time it has to do with the construction of the house. Uh, water or moisture is not channeled away in the right way. You have splashback from concrete, something peels sooner. I've always taken care of my clients. So maybe once every two to three years, I'll go back to a job. Um, last year, um, we painted a brand new sided house and it faded so severely in one year. We used premium products, we put it all on by hand, we're painted in the shade, we observed the weather, the moisture and everything. It was just a typical awesome repaint. That stuff got sunblasted in a year uh, because uh, I don't really have a lot of big failures on my projects and because I don't lean on my reps very often, I just called my Sherwin-Williams rep and was like, hey man, we all can agree that this is a, a complete failure of paint and uh, Sherwin-Williams is actually repaying me to, uh, to paint the house. But again, I don't bug my Sherwin Williams guy. Every week I'm not on the phone saying, hey, tell this contract or tell this homeowner that this deck is supposed to peel, that you know, you need to tell them I did my job right. So um but no, I don't offer warranty because uh, especially when we do historic restorations, um, I, I tell my people this, and this is what I do to gain people's trust. Um if I warrantied this 140 year old house, I'd be warrantying the construction of the house and every bit of paint that's ever been put on this house. There's stuff there from the 1800s that's on this house and I'm basically putting a warranty on that. Old houses and peeling houses take maintenance. And by the time I get them, when somebody calls a professional painter, they're in need of a lot of help. They didn't see one flake and decided to repaint the house. They've waited till it's far gone, that the coating has failed, and you can prep it, and there's still going to be some coating that's going to fail there. But theoretically, the entire coating is on its way to failure. And if you just prep it in place and paint over, you're warranting that failed coating. So, But I always do tell my people, I live in New Prague. Uh, I base my family here. I'm never leaving. I'm going to keep a good name in this town. Once every two to three years, something happens on a job, and you tell me, and I come back and fix it. No questions asked. So, um, yeah, Brian Triplett, thanks for watching. Jeff Tuma, Daniel James, Joe Finch. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to see a video of your mobile command unit. That's in the works. I'm putting the finishing touches. I'm, I'm getting all my uh, efficiencies worked out. So we got the tablet, we got the mobile printer, working on the desk. I still haven't got my arrangement right, but what my goal would be to do, I got that beautiful caravan. My goal would be to pop open that side door and you have a tiny little office back there where I can just sit down quick, bang it all out, and uh, get those estimates out and just have something set up. So that's coming, Joe, for sure. Uh, Ken Sisko, Jamie Hansen, thanks for watching. Uh, Cody, uh, Sam William, Chris Shuck. Do you bid by square foot, linear foot, or man hours or materials? Okay, uh, this is something I talked about in a previous show. Uh, I do three methods of uh, estimating. Number one, uh, I do estimating by perspective. So. I need to know what my business costs to run. What's my labor burden? What's my overhead? What are my materials cost? What, like, the way I think about it is the three ways. I'll go over them real quick here. But one of them is, what's the bare minimum I need to make on this job? It's a big crow, crow fight over there. What is the bare minimum I need to make on this job to just keep my lights on, make sure I don't lose my house, and proceed? It's good to know that perspective. The bottom line, I have to make at least this. Uh, there is also experiential estimating where uh, when you do enough of these houses, you know, I've done two to three hundred projects a year uh, for 10 years now. And, and I have my previous experience with my family business before that, where when you walk up to a house, unless there's some crazy prep going on, I can tell you within a quarter man hour and a quarter gallon of paint how much it's going to take. And you can break that out into... Uh, square foot linear foot and I will have to when other people start uh, estimating but the experiential estimating is is so beneficial where you can do the sniff test on a house and it'll basically tell you you know with experience um, uh, how much it's gonna take uh, the third bit of, bit of perspective estimating that I use is market rate now this is a tough one because you can't really prove it uh, it's sort of an intuition but what I always figure out is, okay, so this is what I know I'll have into the project. This is what I can probably charge for it. This is probably what, you know, this is what I would usually charge for something. But then I'll also say, but what time of year is it? What type of project it is? Um, you know, how in need is the client? How, how, how much is it going to mess up my schedule to do this? What will the market bear? Like, is there is there ability for uh, profit above and beyond because of the skill uh, that we're doing, because of the quality we're doing, because they can't find another person that they can trust because they can't find anybody to answer their calls so it's all one of those that's a little more esoteric sort of thing uh, but I always I always take a uh, you know if you if you only estimate by man hours if you only estimate by linear foot 
you may be missing out on some opportunities uh, for, you know, you may be underpricing yourself based on market price. So I usually use a combination of that. So Diane Williams, thanks much. Uh, Dan Fritz, James Martinez, Steve Capetto, Sue Kennedy, Richard Heilman, a good friend of mine, painter uh, from Minnesota here, Ricky Johnson, Paul Rafferty, uh, decking oil versus decking, decking oil versus decking stain. Um, might have to clarify that a little more. Uh, da, 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 let's decking oil versus decking stain. Well, um, here, uh, th those things can be mutually exclusive. So what we call stain is basically anything you use uh, for bare wood that doesn't take a primer. So it can be translucent, semi-transparent, semi-solid, or solid. Even, even solids that are almost paint-like, we call them stains because they're made to penetrate more versus make a film. Uh, and because they don't make a film, they're less prone to peeling, but they're way more prone to fading. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a game of lesser or two evils. Do you want a house that fades or do you want a house that peels? And I'd probably take a, a fader, but uh, if you can't put it on bare wood, you don't really have that choice. It'll, it'll peel off. So. Um, so some of my favorites, uh, we use a lot of uh, Sickens. Uh, PPG Prolux, uh, Cabot uh, is a mainstay. We have, uh, again, logistics is a big uh, thing for my business. Uh, my local Ace Hardware is a Cabot dealer, Benjamin Moore dealer, Valspar dealer, CNK, and Ace Hardware dealer. So uh, it's tough to beat that um, uh, mile from my house. Sherwin Williams makes a great uh, Sure Deck, Sherwood, uh, all the lines. Everything's kind of in flux. Super Deck, Duck Back. Uh, Everybody's products lines are in flux, mainly because a lot of the oils are going away. Uh, Cabot and uh, Benjamin Moore uh, Arbor Coat, they, you can still get some of that good old sort of linseed oil based translucent. It's cedar toned or natural toned oils. Uh, they work really, really well. Some of them have some modified alkyds in them like that. Uh, my Ace Hardware actually uh, rounded up just about all the alkyd or oil stuff left in the state. So I probably have another summer or two uh, left of that oil supply and I'll probably have to switch over to a hybrid. But uh, Cabot makes a phenomenal uh, semi-solid hybrid, which is just a bang-up deck stain. It's got good color. It still retains the look of kind of the oil because some of the water-based or hybrids stains, sometimes they look a little dead and flat and plasticky. That stain penetrates super well. Uh, and uh, I've never seen one of the uh, Cabot semi-solid hybrid jobs peel yet. Uh, even fading has been really good. It's just a super stable process. Uh, I actually experimented uh, with with uh, with Cabot years ago uh, when it first came out because uh, my process normally when we do like a stain on the side of a house a cedar stain we usually do two coats of it because the first coat can sometimes be uneven there's parts of the house that take it differently so I usually like to back it up with a second coat to even out everything and make it uh, a universal not not a shine but a, a just a universal coat so it all looks the same and they were because there's some waxes in there um, they said it's really not you know it's not great to do a side of the house and then wait two days and come back because it will have that sort of waxy sheen so we actually develop a system where we recoat it very shortly after while the product is still sort of curing or off gassing to where the waxes haven't built up and we've had some great luck with it I mean it's it's a phenomenal product so let's see what else we got Oh, da, 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 da. Jamie Hansen, do you offer discounts to LEO first responders or military? I'm doing a lot of work uh, in these communities on cabinets, but it's starting uh, to really add up. I feel strongly about it, uh, but my CPA is bad business. It's tough. You know, so here's, here's some perspective. You like to give people discounts, but um, if you think about a, a painting company, you know, that makes a margin between 10 and 20%, uh, so basically, you know, uh, most painting companies, depending on your size, I mean, one or two man teams will probably make a, a much larger net profit. You know, you probably maybe do between 30 and 50%, uh, but your revenue is much lower. When you get to be a larger business, you know, you'll do between maybe 10 and 30%. Most, most businesses go between the, you know, 15%, give or take. So if you're to basically say, you know, here's a thousand dollar job. Um, I'm gonna make a 10% net profit. That means you're only taking a hundred dollars away from that thousand And then if you give a 5% discount, you just halved your income on that So it's a very very difficult you want to do that But I've always taken the tact of donate if you're gonna donate donate so for churches for community organizations for sports for uh, You know community groups things like that. What I'll do is donate the painting of a bathroom or a bedroom 
Uh, a lot of people do painter for a day. I find that a lot of people view that uh, just as the same as getting a, a, a room painted and it's about half the price uh, for me to do. So I'll donate the painting of a room. I'll partner with my local Ace Hardware. They'll, they'll donate the paint. And so when I donate, I want the donate. I, I want to make a huge donation. It's going to be free to somebody. Uh, it's going to be at a silent auction. It's going to be to somebody in need. It's going to be an ugly bathroom makeover. Um, when I donate, I donate and it'll be for a charitable reason and I'll get a tax write off for it and we'll get some goodwill in the community and they're fun jobs to do. Um, the kindest thing you can do for uh, groups of people is be the trustworthy painter that doesn't overcharge them, that doesn't go over the bid, doesn't change order themselves into profitability, be on time, answer their calls, do exactly what you say and do world-class work. That's the kindest thing you can do for those people. A 5% discount, you know, is barely gonna rock the boat. They they won't say, oh my God, it was so awesome. They gave me this discount. They'll remember you for the work you do, not the 5% or 10% discount. So Desiree Ferrazzo, thank you for watching. Joan Calve, uh, Jamie Hansen, and what about warranties on cabinets? Uh, I've never warranted a set of cabinets. I've also never been called back to a cabinet job either. So uh, it's been about 10 years doing my process here with oil primer and uh, oils and hybrids top coats and uh, I've actually never been called back to a uh, cabinet job. Uh, Tony Ferrazzo, uh, Anderson Rebus, uh, Sharif Mohammed, thank you for watching, JP Carlton, Jim Callahan, good friend of mine there, uh, Terry Liuski from New Prague, uh, Chris Chuck, Nick, thanks, uh, sounds like we're very similar in how we estimate, lots of variables, oh yeah, and the variables are what'll kill you. Uh, Haval, thank you for watching, uh, Rick Skluzacek, appreciate it as well. Uh, Ricky Johnson, just out of curiosity, uh, curiosity, why do you choose to paint your exteriors by hand versus spraying them? We do a combination. Uh, mainly, I'm, uh, I'm known for my hand finishing. Um, number one, I feel it's a better product. And uh, the, the way that that usually works is uh, finding people who appreciate that. So historic restorations, uh, you know, uh, what, I, what I like to do is work for experienced clients. These are not rich people. These are not wealthy people. I don't look for certain neighborhoods. I'm looking for people who have had experiences with cl uh, uh, contractors and have learned that, you know, it's better to get somebody who you trust who may charge a little more, but who's somebody who's devoted their life to this, loves it more than anybody else, and is gonna do a good job in your house. And those are the people that uh, I usually like to work for. And because of my marketing, and because of me being a loudmouth on social media, it's sort of a self-selecting group, and they'll they'll self-select and, and find me usually, which is nice. So, and again, even if, even if you were to say, well, it's slower, you have to charge more, you're not banging out these houses, there's a market for it. And there's a huge market for it, and I'm an outlier in that. So I talk to my uh, paint reps from all the companies every year, and I say, who's doing the bulk of their exteriors by hand? Whether it's new, whether it's old, whether it's everything else. And uh, a lot of them say, you know, there's a couple one-man shops out there still doing it, but nobody with a serious company is really doing anything by hand. It's an art, it takes a little more time, the product is amazingly different. Technically, you're supposed to back brush or back roll. 90% of all contractors do not do that when they spray outside exteriors. So technically, it depends how you want to look at it. You're supposed to be doing that anyway, but uh, I just go right for the hand, uh, hand brushing. Now, now, we have in the past experimented with a hand brushing all the primer, filling the pores on the outside of the house, and spraying and back brushing and back rolling the top coats, and it's a great process, but uh, you know, it's becoming to be a niche, and people people look for me just specifically because of my hand finishing too. So, Sarah Perryman, thank you for watching. Uh, Chris Chuck, I love TWP and Sickens, uh, two coats wet on wet. Uh, Jamie Hansen, okay, uh, that's what she said. <laughs> That's what he said, Jason Paris. Uh, thank you for watching, my friend, and, and all the Paris crew up there. Uh, Sheila Mock, thank you for watching. Paul Rafferty, cheers, Nick. Decking oil here in Scotland. Only seems to last uh, six months max. Uh, da, 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 da. Thanks for your feedback. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? If you actually get into the oils, and I like oils with a tiny bit of pigment, the pigment is actually like sunscreen for a deck. It'll actually slow down the wear and tear on it. Uh, so if you use just like I have a lot of people who use Thompson water sealer or just clear oil because they want that look It's not the best it, It's only gonna last six months to a year, especially like if you're in Scotland. Is that Scotland? Yeah, I mean you guys probably have a way more damp um, 
uh, climate than ours too. And when you have an exposed wood structure, I mean, when you think about a deck, you're doing all this work to the top to make it look good. You're leaving bare wood right underneath and moisture is gonna migrate from the ground right through that stuff. You're gonna have heavy dew on top and in Scotland, I assume you guys get some crazy weather there. Uh, so yeah, I mean, clear oils will only last six months. Um, if you read the technical data sheets for most translucents or semi-transparent stains, they will tell you every 12 to 18 months you need to do something to that deck. And in Minnesota, we don't have the 18 month option because that would land you in the middle of a winter some years. So basically what that defaults to is every 12 months you need to do something. Uh, John Cole, thank you so much. Sarah Perryman, do you ever do estimates, uh, give advice on exteriors for a client that is considering putting in an offer on a new home? Oh my God, all the time. I probably do three of those a day. Um, and I usually just tell people, you know, hey, if uh, this is a potential house, you know, it takes me a lot of time. Sometimes it's an hour away. I spend 45 minutes with you and then I drive an hour home. If it's just for a potential house, I can give you a ballpark. If you send me the real estate listing or if you send me a bunch of pictures or sometimes if you even just send me the address uh, from my experience and from Google Maps and 3D views and things like that, I can get a feel for the house. And if it's a make or break decision on whether you're going to buy that house, I can at least give you a perspective uh, on what the exterior, what the interior might take based on past jobs I've done. So Sarah, I'm always happy, especially if you guys are looking for a new house. I would definitely help you out on that. Um, okay, guys, that's about it for today. Um, we got these guys eating the lunch over there, uh, catered in from Etlin's Cafe, the finest restaurant in our area, and uh, I'm hungry. Uh, so I'm going to go over there and uh, have some lunch with the crew. We're going to get back. We're going to nail the uh, floor on this one, and then we're moving on to our next deck. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you to the, for the PDCA for spreading the word about this. Um, there's a residential forum, uh, a, a, um, an offshoot of the PDCA, a, a specific group from the PDCA that's actually coming to Minneapolis in late July. I'm bringing my entire leadership team there. I would love to converse and see other painters there and uh, and see, uh, see what everybody else is doing. There is going to be some of the finest contractors in the United States at this residential forum in late July. It's uh, it's called the AST Advanced Shop Talk Residential Forum for the PDCA. And I'd love to have you guys there. You can meet me, you can meet all the rest of the leadership team. I'll actually be presenting a topic on apprenticeship. And I think I'm actually gonna have the head of my apprenticeship, Young Johnny, um, present as well. So it's gonna be a fun time, guys. So have a good weekend. We're gonna get back at it. Thanks to this old house for coming down here and doing this. This is an honor to have you guys here. Uh, a young Nick Slavic uh, used to wait with bated breath on the weekends on uh, public television for your shows to come on. And uh, to have a film crew from them here uh, is amazing, truly. It's, it's super humbling. So PDCA, thank you. This old house, thank you. Thank you everybody for watching. I love all the questions. Love the interaction. Have a good weekend. See you next week.